Hello everybody, in this particular training video we will be learning how to create a Microsoft Access database that will hold our address information such as person's name, their address, phone number. This is a very simple process of creating a database. So I will walk you through step by step. So what I'll do is on my desktop I have a folder and within this folder I'm going to create a new uh, access database file so I'll just right click it and then pick the Microsoft Access and for this one I'll just call it address and I'll open this up just and for my personal uh, preference I like to have uh, my little access database open up a certain way and then have a certain look and feel so what I'll do is I will create a database and in this database, I will create a table just the way that normal access people would do it. And I'll show you the difference between the default way of looking at it and the way I look at it. And you can pick and choose any which way you like. So I'll click on my table design. And from here, I'll just say name. And then I'll pick address and phone number. And I'll leave everything as far as the data type goes, so all text. And then I'm going to click on save so I can save this particular table. And I'll call this T for table and addresses. Address. I do not want any primary key, so I'll leave that alone. So if I view this, it's going to have a name, address, and a phone number. And notice, if I try to move this around, I really can't. For my personal preference, I don't like that. I want to have the flexibility to move this around and shrink it or make resizes to any which way I want to. So in order for me to do that, I'll go here under File, Options, Current Database, and then from under where it says Document Window Operations, options I'll click on overlapping windows click OK and then it's going to ask me to close and reopen it and I'll do that and then I'll reopen up our access database now if I open up this table now and now I have the flexibility of resizing it moving it around any which way I want this is just my personal preference you may choose to do it this way or you could do it by default, how Microsoft Access normally works. It's completely up to you. So having said that, so now that we have our table, and in this table, we can store different information. So I will enter some data in here. So I'll type in Mark, and the address could be, uh, let's just say, Maryland. And the phone number could be 4439 blah 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 and the next person's name is mike and this particular person address i'm just putting a state in there but obviously you get the point and this particular person lives in uh call it new york and his address phone number is And naturally, all these numbers are all fictitious. They don't really mean anything. And I'll call this another one. Call it Mark. And this particular person lives in New Jersey. And there you go. So we have three records. And obviously, you can fill more them up. I just want to put three in there just to give you understanding and then how to go by doing it. If you can enter three, you can after that enter millions and millions and all. So there's our table. And next thing what we want to do is want to filter some of this information out. So only look at particular person, address, phone number, so on and so forth. So in order for us to do that, we can create a query by going to create. And then rather than clicking on a query visit, I like to use a query design. Open this up, and when you open up that, it will by default automatically come in here and say, oh, which table do you want to add? 
or queries or both. This is just the window. And there are two ways to do this. One way is to click on the table that you want to pick. In this particular example, we only have one table. So we could just click Add. Simple as that. That's one way to add a table. Or you could just go to your table section and literally drag and drop. If you have multiple tables, you could do drag and drop whichever one you want. I find that that's the easiest way to do it. That's just my personal preference once again. So you may choose to do it by going to show table and doing it this way. It's completely up to you. So I'll go in and drop all these names. And you can do that by first select the first one field, hold on the shift key, then select the last field if you want to drop them all. And then once they're all selected, you can literally drag and drop them and it will all populate accordingly. So before we go any further, I'm going to save this query and I'll just name this one lookup. And in here, if I run this right now, nothing special about it. It just looks like just like a table. So if I put this in here and I'm gonna open up my table and put them side by side, there's no difference whatsoever. So I'm gonna close up my table and look up my query again put this in a design view. And now what I want to do is I want to have the ability or give the ability to my user to filter for a particular person by name. So in order for me to do that, there's a short piece of code that I can add. And that is, let me bring up a notepad and you guys can see it. And make this a little bigger, like a lot bigger. So this is the code. You open bracket, close bracket, and within these two brackets, you can type in whatever you want to show as a prompt. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll say, please enter name. So I'm gonna copy this, and you'll see exactly what I mean. And then where it says criteria, I'm gonna paste it here, and now I'm going to save it and run it. Rather than as compared to before when we ran there, it automatically showed us every all three records. Now it's gonna ask me, hey, what name do you wanna look at? Enter it here, and I will filter for that. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll just type in Mike first, and then click OK, and then it's gonna only gonna show me one record. It's pretty simple, but it's very powerful at the same time. So if I put this out, and rerun it and this time i'm going to type in mark now it's going to show me two simple but yet very powerful now imagine if you have i don't know thirty thousand rows in your table and there are 10 marks rather than you going scrolling up and down up and down trying to figure out you have this nice little query where all you did was add this short piece of code right here it says enter your name and then Microsoft Access will go and filter for that name and show you the 10 marks that you are looking for out of the 30,000 rows of data that you have in your table. Now think about it from that point of view. It is very powerful. So having said that, next thing what you want to do is you want to make it look a little pretty. So it would be easy to access rather than people going into the table here, clicking it here and then entering the information here and then closing this out, and then coming in here, running this, and then enter the name. That could be somewhat of a pain in the butt. So what do you wanna do is, when you're creating databases or any application, whether it be a web application or a desktop application, such so as Microsoft Access, you wanna give your users the ability to make it easier for them to access the information or enter the information as possible. So one way to do that is create a form. You could do that by going to create, then form design. And from here, what we could do is we could put two buttons. One could be for entering information in there. Another one could be looking up information. So I click on this button and I click here. Yes. And I'm going to say, I don't want any picture in it. Leave that alone. And then in here, I'm gonna type in enter 
address. That's one button. Then I want to add another button. No, I don't want any pictures. Look up. Address. So what we could do is next, we have to link these buttons to these table, this table, and this button to this query. So when the person clicks on this, let me put this in the design um, regular view. So when the person clicks on this, right now if I click on it, nothing's going to happen because these buttons are not linked. This is not linked to that. So in order for us to link that, I'm going to put this back in our design view. There are two ways to do it. The easy way is to, there's a thing called Microsoft or Visual Basic, which is VBA, Microsoft Visual Basic Access, which is the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to click it, right click here. And this is nothing complicated, guys. It's pretty simple. It's a short code that you add in. So you, how I did it now is just right click here and then I click on form property. I know you can't really see it, but trust me, it's just right click there and then you use actually what I'll do is just make it a little smaller here so you guys can see the whole screen. Uh, you still can't see it. So hang on, let me make this a little even better. Pull this up a little so you guys can see it now. So there you go. If I right click here and then click on form properties and then from this screen go to event and then click on this and then uh, what I want to do is the event that I want to pick is on click when someone clicks on it I want something to happen so I click on event procedures and then after that little dot 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 thing and then this is what is the visual basic window looks like not to get intimidated we're not going to be doing anything crazy here so don't get intimidated first so here it is so I'm gonna bring this down The code that you're going to typing in, if you start typing, uh, if you hold down your control on PC, control space is going to go and give you a hint as you type. So the, the simple code that we're typing in is called do command cmd dot open form. And the next hint is going to be what is the name of the form? Actually, no, we want to open table, sorry. So open table, then it's going to ask, what is the name of the table? So I'm going to put open quotation mark, close quotation mark. So in this case, the table name is T address. And then click away. And that is all, one line of code. And I'm going to click closed and it's going to ask me, do I want to save my form? I want to say yes. So I'll call this main. So if I close this out and I open up my, put my form in a view. And now if I click on this one, it's going to open up the table. Bang. There you go. And now I can enter my information here, blah, 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 and go on with my business. The next thing we want to do is want to link this button if i click on it now nothing is happening i'm going to link this button to this query so go back to the design view same principle select the button and then go under under click event because that's what i want to do when somebody clicks on it i want it to do something so click event on event procedures so from here just like we have a do command open table in this case we want to say do command open query. It's simple as that. And then the name of the query is Q lookup. Save it. Close it. And then let's view it. So if I click on this, it will open up my table where I can enter stuff in there. However, if I'll click on my lookup now, it's going to and go to my query. It's like, hey, what name do you want to look up? So in this case, I'll type in Mark, and it's going to show me the two records. And there you go, guys. That's how you build a simple access database, which will hold your ad address information. And that is under 15 minutes. I'll see you guys in the next video.